Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome back to movies that start with a consonant month. Last uh, last time I reviewed Justice League, I really enjoy the film. I know it's struggling at the box office, but I have faith it's going to make a lot of money worldwide, so it'll break even. So oh, those of you that think it's going to flop, yeah, it's not going to flop. Just just getting that out of the way, just in case if people say that in, in the comments. But this is a movie with the letter V which is uh, a decent movie. I gave it a second watch like a few months ago and I thought, hey, it's decent. Like there's a problem there are problems with the movie and I will get to those and that is Vantage Point, the two disc special edition I got for a dollar at Dollar Tree, like I think last year. But anyway, what do I like about the film the second time around? Well, the cast. That's one hell of a cast. This is a great ensemble cast mostly. You have Dennis Quaid, he's always good in almost every movie he's in, except for, like, Legion, which is horrible. You got Matthew Fox, who I think is an underrated actor. He gets put in a lot of bad films, but he's not the problem. You got Forrest Whitaker, Oscar winner. Hey, Rogue One, this is how you use Forrest Whitaker effectively. Yeah, this is for wasting that great actor's time as Saul Guerrero, a, sp a, na a Spanish name for war, and he does nothing. He's just, 90 years old, and he dies. That's it. Here... He's the guy with the video camera that review that shows all the footage of the assassination on one of these, uh, I think a president or something. Yeah, you have um, Sigourney Weaver, lover from Alien. She's a great actress. Ghostbusters, the original, and Ghostbusters Two, and uh, you know she can she does a, a great job with the little screen time she has. William Hurt, he's always a good actor to watch. I hated him in Lost in Space, but everybody sucked in that movie. Now, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, let me read the synopsis in case you haven't seen it. During a historic counter-terrorism summit in Spain, the President of the United States is struck down by assassin's bullet. That's William Hurt. Uh, eight strangers have a perfect view of the kill. Yeah, there's basically, the movie kind of like goes in repeat, like uh, like Groundhog Day or, or Edge of Tomorrow. Live, fruit, die, repeat. Basically, it's like that. That's one of the reasons I didn't like it the first time. As the minutes leading up to the fatal shot are replaying through the eyes of each witness, the reality of the assassination takes shape. But just when you think you know the answer, the shattering final, final truth is revealed. Vantage Point is a mind-bending political action thriller starring these actors, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's one of the problems I have when I first saw this movie. The going back in time and seeing the same scene from a different perspective kind of took me out of it the first time. The second time around, I did enjoy it. But there are two major problems I have with this movie. This film has Spanish, a lot of it. Granted, it's subtitled, but like Logan, I told you that foreign languages usually take me out of a film. If it's American, don't put don't put freaking Spanish in the movie. Can't they have accents? I, at least the accents that I can understand. You got two people in this movie. You got Edgar Ramirez. Don't care about that actor. Not for me. Uh, and Ayala Zurer. I think she's like German or something, and she speaks Spanish. I'm like, that is not needed. There's a subplot with her. And the Spanish guy that they're, I don't know, they're in Spain. They're, they're like running from the government or what have you. I don't care about them. They have this little girl that Forrest Whitaker has to save. I'm like, that, that was not needed. You couldn't make the movie. The movie would have been five minutes shorter without that. And also the location in Spain, nah, I would have done it. I would have done it somewhere else. Like maybe uh, Canada or something or like Turkey. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go to the biggest Spanish country in the world. Yeah. No, thank you. But Peter Travis did a good job directing the movie. Those are my main problems. It's just a it's just a personal thing because you know I hear too much of it at home and and outside, so it gets to me. And you know, but and in a movie, I don't want to hear it. You know, I'm not watching a Spanish soap opera. I'm watching a freaking action thriller. But the actions f shot well. The film looks great. The actors are really trying. I'm Zoe Saldana has a small cameo in this. That's as a reporter, so that's something I guess. Um. It, it looks like it has a budget, so it's not, you know, like a cheap-looking movie. And uh, it's not too long. It's only 90 minutes, so it's not two hours long, because two hours of Spanish will make my head explode. That's why I never want to see Pan's Labyrinth, because I just don't care. Um, but the film, yeah, it's PG-13, so it's not too violent, so you can watch this with your younger kids if, you know, if they can handle it. It's basically like if you took the action scenes from Winter Soldier, but didn't shake the camera in the beginning as much. But that's what it looks like. It looks like Captain America Winter Soldier, and, uh, the, the action scenes, because it's like very frenetic and like, you know, people are screaming and running away. I'm like, yeah, you don't need to translate that. Fear in a movie is never, never needs to be translated. I get it. But overall, 
the second time around, I like the film. I don't think it, it you know, I don't think it, I give it too much credit last time. I was like, ah, oh, this movie sucks because it, it did an Edge of Tomorrow and has so much Spanish. Oh, my God, it sucks. No, seeing it again with the commentary is how to see the movie because it blocks most of the the, the, the dialogue and, and it's I can see the film more clearly. And it's well acted. It's not like the movie's horribly acted. But, yeah, just the whole foreign, you know, relations thing is not for me. Never was. There's three things I don't like talking about on social media. Politics, religion, and foreign languages. Those, throw them right out the window because I have no interest, guys. Don't ever tell me to re review any movies with those kind of things. I like political thrillers, like Winter Soldier, but I don't talk about Trump here. I don't talk about the freaking senators and mayors and all that. No, it's not for me. Get that out of here. I'm not a political person. I'm liberal. But anyway, this movie is well done. If you want to see a, movie, a decent thriller that's got a great cast for the most part, except for those two idiots that I don't care about because, you know, foreign, no, get out of my face. And uh, yeah, but the rest of the movie is well done. I gave it a second look and I'm like, it's decent. For a dollar, I spent a lot worse on movies this year. And uh, if you want to watch it, they, this is not hard to find. They're, they have this DVD or Blu-ray in lots of convenience stores and thrift stores and online. So it's not hard to find. And it's a V, so it, it counts for this month. So, hey, that's my review of Vantage Point. Decent movie. I have some problems with it, like I said, just like I did with Logan. But basically, the rest of the film is fine. You know, it's not horrible. And, you know, watching it again, I was like, I can appreciate it more this time than the first time. Because I know what's going to happen. And it's not like when they repeat it, it's like, oh, God, this scene again? No, it's not that bad. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'm glad you've been watching my my uh, Justice League review. I meant every word I said in that review. It's not horrible. I've seen five horrible movies, and I'll get to that in December when I do my best and worst of the year in my live stream December 1st. So mark your calendars. I'm doing a live stream that day to end this year on a high note. You know, to end uh, the, the my, my movie-going experience. Because I only got a few more films to see this week. And my list will be complete. And I'm ready for more films in 2018. So, see you guys in the next review.